This is Quartz Composer tutorial number eight, and I'm going to tell you about macro patches. Um, way back in the beginning, I told you that there were three different kinds of patches. There are providers, there are processors, and there are consumers. Uh, oh, I did have a little thing over here that said macro patches. Maybe that, maybe that wasn't there at the time, I don't know. But uh, now I'm gonna tell you about them. So you may have noticed that there's this create macro uh, toolbar button and then there's also this line here that says root macro patch we've never uh, asked what those are about and so now it's time to do that so um, I'm gonna do that by showing an example and um, maybe what I'd like to do is have some text that flickers on the screen um, and I'm gonna have you know some text up here that flickers some text down here that flickers some text over here that flickers if you've done any programming you know that um, you don't want to have uh, figured out in in code some how to do something like flickering text and then say oh I need three different uh, versions on screen at the same time well I should just copy and paste huge chunks of code and uh, and what you would do in that case is you'd make something called a function probably uh, which is kind of like an encapsulated version of what you figured out and that's that's kind of what macros are so Let's start out by getting it to work. So uh, maybe I'll do, um, sorry, uh, image with string, and uh, I'll put a sprite on the screen. I will connect those together. So I'm actually showing the image that's resulting from that text at the correct width and height. And I will call this first. And, um, I wanted to I wanted to flicker on and off. So how could I do that? Well, if I can go between false and true, then that might flicker it on and off. Um, I guess it's probably worth noting that there's going to be some flickering text. It's not. I don't think it's a big deal, but I know people always warn about things like that in tutorials. So there could be some flickering text right now. Uh, I will use. There are several ways to get uh, that kind of on and off in a random sort of way. I don't want it to just go on, off, on, off. I want it to be uh, flickering randomly. So there are a couple ways to do it. I, I'm going to use the wave generator, and if I go to the patch inspector, I can see that in addition to the kinds of uh, waveforms that we've used, there's also random. So this will give us a random number every one second, and it will be um, given this amplitude and offset. It'll be a number between zero and one. So if I connect that to enable, well, that's not exactly what I want because those numbers are going to be like 0.297, sorry, 0 0.02975 and things like that. So, uh, so how about this? I can use mathematical expression because um, enable should be either true or false. We're not looking for a number here. So an easy way to get that true and false is um, to use mathematical expression. And this, this is kind of our if statement. Uh, in addition to all the things that a mathematical expression patch can do, it also can act as an if statement. So uh, what I'll do is say, if um, if some random number, I can make up the uh, the variable names. You used to use A and B, you can see, but I'm just gonna call it random and it automatically changes the input. So if random number, let's be even more specific. If random number is, uh, is less than point Four point three, I don't know. Uh, then, then this whole thing will evaluate to true, and that will turn on the sprite. So let's see how that works out. So it, it goes on sometimes, probably a third of the time uh, that we get a random number, it'll um, it'll show up. So I could I could mess around with these numbers to get it to look right. I also probably want it to go faster, so maybe um, you can see it's kind of flickering more now. So that, that seems like it would work. So I, I've kind of got it figured out, but actually maybe what I want is to have it be kind of grayish and then um, and then whiter. Uh, and and there, there are a couple ways to do this. The way I'm going to do it is probably not the preferred way for me, but look, I think this will be better for the example. Let me make a second version of this. I just hit duplicate. So now I've got one that is white all the time and then I've got a another white one showing up on top of it sometimes so that's actually kind of nice right now uh, it's more intense flickering but it's always there uh, maybe that I, I actually want that um, whoa. Oh, it's gonna, okay 
maybe I want um, this one, this this one that's always there to not be so bright. So I could uh, kind of make it grayer. Um, so that works. Now, the the one thing I'm noticing is that when that second one shows up on top of the other one, it looks kind of fuzzy, and that's because there are two of them showing up. Uh, so maybe I'll go one step further and say, when this one is enabled, this one should be disabled. So it's only showing one or the other. Instead of, uh, right now, when this one's enabled, it's showing it on top of a gray one. Uh, and there is a difference, I think. So we've, the easiest way to make that happen is to say, um, when this one is true, sometimes it's true, zero and one are just like true and false, that's why this is working. But uh, maybe uh, when this one is true, that one should be false and vice versa. And the easiest way to make that happen is with uh, the logic patch and there's a not here. So whenever, it's very weird with the, you know, all of these other ones and or you need both inputs, but with not you really, you don't need the second one. It's still there though. So. Um, we're going to say whenever this is true, it uh, this one will be false. That's the, actually the opposite. So I will connect it like that. So I uh, don't know if we can see. I think I can see a difference. I can see a difference for sure. So when this one is on, that one's off, and vice versa. And if we look, we should see that go back and forth, true, false, true, false. And if we were looking up here for this one, we'd see that going in the opposite, true, false. So they're kind of toggling between each other. There's several ways to do this. There's actually a toggle patch that might help. Uh, we could also just use one sprite and change its color back and forth instead of having two separate ones. But I wanted to make this kind of sufficiently complicated that we want to uh, not have to duplicate this three times for my three different um, versions of my um, flickering text. So uh, maybe what I do is highlight all of this and then click the Create Macro button. And what I've done is I've kind of encapsulated all of that logic into a patch that I've just made up. And I can call it whatever I want. This is, I'll call it flickering text. So now, how do I see it? Well, this is really important. The way that you know a patch is a macro patch is that it has pointy corners. And what that means is you can double click on it and enter into it. So now we're inside the uh, flickering text patch. How do we know? Well, it shows right here. The root macro patch is our normal kind of patch that we're looking at, our composition that we're looking at. And then um, flickering text is within, uh, it's showing me that I'm within that patch. And I can go back to edit parent, and that brings me back to the top level. I can click here, I can go in. You can have macros within macros. So this is how we uh, do this um, kind of encapsulating of logic. Now, um, here is something really interesting. Wouldn't it be nice if I could, um, from out here, change the text? Now the reason for that is because if I duplicate this three times for my three different flickering texts, they're each going to have different text. I can't go in here and change the text because that would change it for all of them. So I need what I need is an input port here that lets me choose the text that's going to flicker. The way you do that is let's find where the actual text is. That's this, right? This is uh, first. So um, I could just uh, publish inputs. By right-clicking on the on the patch, I can publish inputs, choose string, and this will be uh, I can I can call it whatever I want. Um, text. I can call it text. Sure, let's call it text. Now, when I go up, you can see there's a little green dot here. When I go up, now that's been exposed at the top level, so I could change it right here. Second. Oops, there's a problem because it only I only changed it in one. I only published that one from uh, this one. Uh, image with string patch, not the other one. That one is still saying first. So the the easiest way to do this is if I right click, this is another feature, insert input splitter. So if I choose text, what it actually does is it tears off that uh, input port and makes it a separate one. So now I could use that one and feed both. So it's kind of like a, it's a splitter. It's like, um, this is kind of like if you had a uh, splitter on your on your uh, phone or your um, that's that's a weird reference nobody knows what I mean by that but uh, if you have one of those like um, plugs that goes into the outlet and um, and allows you to plug two things in that's what this is so you can see the green dot is still here and um, and now anytime I change the text here changes it for both so that's great wouldn't it also be nice if I could position it from here well let's do that. I could change the X position, and I know I'm going to have the same problem. If I change, if I only uh, input, if I only uh, publish 
the X position as an input, then I'm only changing one sprite, not the other one. So um, maybe right away I'll think ahead and say this I need to input, I need to uh, split this, and I also need to split the uh, Y position. And these will feed both. So this is what I meant about getting kind of, this is the most complicated thing we've seen so far. It's not that complicated once you look at it, but uh, we can kind of see that it makes sense to not duplicate this and make a huge spaghetti mess in the composition, but um, we, can, we can do this in a way that all of this is encapsulated inside the macro. So now I'll publish this as, I'll call it uh, X, and then I'll publish this one and I'll call it Y. And now we should see there's three dots here that are green. When I go back up to the top, I can see there are three options here. So I could even look at a patch inspector for this and change it using the knobs. Sweet. Let's call this one first. Let's call, let's just duplicate this and um, make a second one. We'll call it second. And maybe we'll just uh, nudge it down a bit. Whoops. There's the second one, and maybe uh, a third one, which is the same but is um, over towards the right. Whoops. So now we've got three of them. They all flicker together, and you know, if, you, if that was a problem for you, I think maybe. Um, Maybe there's a way to go in here, and uh, we could um, we could add some kind of offset to this number. If you only want it, if you if you're okay with the kind of flickering that it does, but you didn't want them to be flickering in unison, we could probably add some uh, number here, and um, and then expose that as like a you know like some kind of offset over here. That way they're separate. I don't know. There's a bunch of ways to do it, but I think. Um, I think that's probably enough about uh, macro patches, or at least how to create your own. So instead, let's look at some macro patches that already exist. One of them is, uh, for example, lighting. Uh, let's try making a rotating cube. And um, I'll get too far into this, but I can have an integrator that counts pretty quickly, and I'll make its uh, x position and Ooh, not X position, sorry. I'll make its X rotation and Y rotation and Z rotation all come from the in the integrator. And now you've got this rotating uh, cube. But it doesn't even look like a rotating cube because it's all white. So what's the problem? There's no lighting. So uh, what I can do is highlight these two and cut them to the clipboard and then add this lighting patch. And you notice it has pointy edges. It's actually a macro patch that I can enter into. And now I will paste. And now I've got uh, lighting for my cube. Now it shows me that I'm inside the lighting patch. I can go back up to the top and I can change some of the uh, parameters of that lighting. So um, maybe the lighting color changes. Maybe um, shadows change. I don't know. There's probably lots of things that we could do here. Right now it's pretty minimal, but um, we can, uh, if we have a really sophisticated 3D um, environment, it would get a lot more interesting here. We can change the location of the light and so on. Okay, so that's one example. Another example, and this is the last thing I want to show you, is this thing called uh, render in image. So what this means is actually it will well, uh, it, it produces an image, so I'm going to put that image onto a billboard just so I can see what it's doing. And I'll give it a width of two so that it fills the whole screen. I can enter into it, and what actually happens inside here is we actually produce an image. And this actually kind of looks like any other composition that you'd make. So, for example, let me um, get an image from somewhere. Here's a, an image, and I will put it on a billboard. Uh, so I've got a clear, I need a clear patch in here. If you don't, it'll freak out. So uh, it'll just kind of like put gibberish on the screen. Uh, and then I will display an image 
and I'll make the width of this image 2. So this is a complete composition, right? This, this actually takes an image and shows it on the screen. Uh, but I'm actually inside render an image, so that is producing an image of whatever uh, happened in here. Let me, let me go a little bit further and just um, make this thing rotate. So now uh, we should see in the parent, when we look at the image that it's producing, it's actually, uh, it should be producing a rotating image. There we go. So it's actually producing this rotating image. So this is kind of like a composition that's uh, rendered inside the composition, and we can use it as an image. Um, let's look at what the viewer is doing. There it is. And of course, if I change the, um, the billboard that that rendering image is being shown on, it actually shows up smaller. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, this is going to become a lot more useful in a bit. Um, and I'll tell you ahead of time, you can imagine if you wanted to have um, several of the, nah, we'll, we'll worry about it later. <laughs> right now, this is uh, everything you need to know about macro patches, including things like um, like uh, lighting and uh, render an image. There's also a really interesting one called trackball. And you put your, your all of your patches inside the trackball macro, and it allows you to kind of drag it around on the screen using the mouse. Very interesting. So um, that's about it.